meiosis. Instead of cell division or nuclear division, call, we can call this reduction division. And why can we call it reduction division? Because we are going from 2N diploid to N haploid. We're going to talk about it in two stages. The first part, the large stage, is called meiosis 1. During meiosis 1, or beginning of it, there you will have interphase, and it will be the same as interphase for cell division, where you have your DNA. inside your chromosome, I mean inside your nucleus, and when you hit the S phase, this DNA will replicate, double, fill up. So you will have the doubling of that. The rest of this we're basically concerned with what's happening to the chromosomes. I'm not, we're not going to say what happens to the nuclear membrane and this. Many of the same things happen, but it's, it's, we're concerned with what's going on with the chromosomes. How are they being reduced from diploid to haploid? First part of meiosis one would be prophase one. And we have chromosomes in the nucleus. They've already replicated. And we would have these pairs of sister chromatids. And just like before, they would start condensing and becoming visible. So they're all coming visible. Now as prophase goes on, these chromosomes will move around and we would start forming what we call tetrads. Meaning the pairs would actually become joined and so this part here would be one homologous chromosome. So would the other one, the whole thing together would be what we call a tetrad referring to five or I mean four. <laughs> Sorry about that four. So it's four non sister chromatids because that one and that one are a sister chromatid and that one and that one are sister chromatids. But they're not this is not a sister chromatid there. So we say four non sister chromatids. Now as prophase one continued and we form these tetrads uh, where they are joined, that's part of the two non sister chromatids closest together, can start exchanging DNA. So some of the DNA from here will get switched to there. And some of it here could be switched to there. And this takes place in prophase one, and we call this genetic
crossing over. Pen is being crossing over. Okay. Did any crossing over during pro phase one? Write that down again so you don't forget pro phase one. And it is an exchanging of different segments of the DNA. So now something that was carried on, one of the, say, the mother's gene, the father's gene is now being carried on the mother's gene and vice versa. Now we go on to metaphase one. And as I said before, we are simply ref basically focusing on the chromosomes. Yes, during prophase one, the nuclear membrane is going to disappear. The spindle fiber is going to form. We know the spindle fibers have. From mitosis, you already know what the spindle fibers have to do. What we're concerned about is what happens to all the chromosomes. So this time, we will have the tetrads. Let's make them a little bit bigger. We'll have all the tetrads are the ones that are forming a line during metaphase. So they will eventually form a nice perfect line at the, at the plane, equatorial plane. So they form this line at the equatorial plane. So instead of being, so it is the tetrads rather than just the pairs of sister chromatids. And we will have the spindle fibers attaching to them. Now we have anaphase one. So with anaphase 1, we would take all these chromosomes and instead of the sister chromatids being pulled apart, it would be the homologous chromosomes or the homologous chromosomes or what we also know as the autosomes would be what is being pulled apart. So you're breaking up the tetrads. So the spindle fibers. So we would say during anaphase one. homologous chromosomes divide instead of in mitosis where it was the sister chromatin. We have telophase 1 and cytokinesis. So in telophase one, we would have the two cells go through the splitting. And they would have this, the homologous chromosomes divided.
which means we are now have they are haploid. Yes, these are pairs of sister chromatids, but we had in the beginning we had eight chromosomes for the germ cell. Haploid, or it is now N. Remember at the beginning, uh, if we go back to the beginning, we had actually four blue and four of these pinkish ones. Now we only have two of each. So that's a big difference. So meiosis one, going through it, you have prophase where the chromosomes condense, form tetrads, and then the tetrads will have genetic crossing over where they uh, where they have some exchange. And there you see I've added some of the change. Were there chains? Why did we do that? So remember that there was some genetic crossing over going on during prophase. Then the tetrads would line up, and then the homologous chromosomes would be divided, and we would then form two new cells with haploid number, but we still have pairs of sister chromatids. So real quick, meiosis one. We go through, we replicate the DNA, we, then we have the, con, the chromosomes with content, the collagen would condense into chromosomes, and then we would start having the pairing up of the chromosomes forming these tetrads. Then we would have genetic crossing over where they are exchanging some DNA between non-sister chromatids. And then in metaphase, we would line them up, and the spindle fibers will hook up to them. And then in anaphase, the homologous chromosomes would divide, not the sister chromatids. And finally, at the end, we would have division of the cytoplasm, and we would have two new cells, daughter cells, that are haploid. But they still contain pairs of sister chromatids which is why we need another round of division, which I will talk about later.